right, so today we're talking about factorial notation. Um, and when you use factorial, what you're doing is you're condensing um, a bunch of factors, as the name suggests, um, that are being decreased by one each term into a single term. So I'll show you, I'll, I'll try to simplify that a little bit better um, and make it a better explanation. Um, but right now, I'll just have to introduce a, a little bit of, uh, of new terminology and of new um, symbols that we're going to be using uh, while dealing with factorials. So um, factorial, and I've underlined factor because that's a major part of factorial, um, is expressed as an exclamation point. Okay. So when we look at this string of multiples here, we've got 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Those factors um, can be expressed as 5 factorial. So what's happening with this 5 factorial is we're starting with the 5, and we're decreasing by 1 each term, all the way down to our last term, which is always 1. Um, and we can do this with a variable as well. As seen in the second example, we've got x, x minus 1, x minus 2. And this just shows that it's a pattern, decreasing by 1 each time. And it goes down to 3, 2, and 1. So this goes down to 1, just like the last one. And this can be expressed as x factorial. Um, so an important thing to know about factorial, 0 factorial equals 1. And negative factorial, when you're doing the factorial of a negative number, um, you get no solution. Why? Because um, what I said earlier, you go all the way down to 1. Well, if you're starting in a negative number, you're already, already less than 1, and it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So you cannot take the factorial of a negative number. All right, so when dealing with factorials, we're going to have to uh, work with specific types of questions, often asking you to solve and simplify. So with this first one, we've got 7, factor uh, seven factorial over 6 factorial. Um, so what we can do here is expand it. Now remember, you decrease by 1 each time. So this is going to be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. In the bottom, the denominator, we're going to have 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, to take a look, we've got 6 factorial on the top, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and on the denominator as well. Those can cancel out because they're factors. Um, so what we're left with is an answer of 7. Okay, so here is another factorial question. Again, we're simplifying, um, and we've got 6 factorial in the numerator, and the denominator we've got 3 factorial, 2 factorial. So let's expand this again. You don't have to expand the factorial for every question, but just for this tutorial, it is a bit handy, um, just for explanation. So we've got 6 factorial in the top, which I've expanded, and 3 factorial times 2 factorial expanded those as well. So we've got 2 times 1 on the top right here, and we've got 2 times 1 on the bottom, so we can cancel those out. So we're left with 6 times 5 times 4 times 3, and 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. So we can express the 6 and then cancel it out. So what we're left with is 5 times 4 times 3, which is 3 times 20. So our answer is 60. All right, now we've got a variable factorial, and we did already look at this um, before we started doing the example problems. Um, so with a variable factorial, we're doing it exactly the same way. t plus 3 factorial is just t plus 3 times t plus 2, uh, all the way down to 2 and to 1. And on the uh, denominator, we've got t plus 2 and t plus 1, all the way down to 2 and 1. And this can also be expressed as t plus 3 times t plus 2 factorial over um, t 
2 plus 2 factorial. So if we want to look at it this way, we've got uh, t plus 2 multiplied by um, 1 less of a factor each time, all the way down to 1, on both the top and the bottom. So we can cancel those out, and we're left with t plus 3. If we look at it this way, we've got t plus 2 factorial on the top, t plus 2 factorial on the bottom. So either way, we're left with t plus 3. All right, now here's one that involves both um, constant factorials, 7 and 6, and then variables, and then variable factorials. So we're going to do it exactly the same way, um, 7 factorial over 6 factorial. Well, we looked at that one in the first example. We can cancel out every common factor in the top and the bottom. So what we're left with, if we look at this, uh, like this, we've got 7 times 6 factorial um, over 6 factorial, right? Um, and then with the r plus 2 and the r plus 1 factorial, we can express that as r plus 2 times r plus 1, one less, factorial, and then times r. We can't forget about this other variable. On the bottom, we've got r plus 1 factorial. So, what can we cancel out? Well, 6 factorial and r plus 1 factorial. So what we're left with is 7r times uh, r plus 2. And you can leave your answer like that, or you can expand it to uh, 7r squared plus 14r. So either one of those is perfectly fine. Um, OK, so the last question we have this one is not simplified. This is solved. So we're actually going to be looking for a value of, of n in our factorial equation. So we're going to do it the same way. Same way. Um, these do get a little tedious, but um, they become very easy with practice. So n plus 1 factorial, that's just going to be n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 factorial, right? And if we kept going, we could go all the way down to, uh, to 2, to 1. Um, but it becomes a little bit um, repetitive and it, uh, almost unnecessary. So on the bottom, we still have our n plus 1 factor, or n minus 1 factorial. Um, so if we take a look at this, we can cancel out n minus 1 factorial on the top and the bottom. So we're left with n plus 1 times n minus 30 equals 0. So n squared, we, um, we multiply the terms out. n squared plus n minus 30 equals 0. Uh, and if we factor that to get two numbers that will multiply to get negative 30 and add to get 1, uh, we can get n uh, plus 6 and n minus 5 equals 0. So if we set each of these to 0, n plus 6 equals 0, and n minus 5 equals 0, we can get n equals 5 and n equals negative 6. So it would appear that we're done. However, with problems like this, you always have to check your answers to make sure that, um, that they're all acceptable. There, you can see it now. Um, so if we put n minus 6 into our equation, we get um, we get negative 6 plus 1 factorial over negative 6 minus 1 factorial minus 30 equals 0. Well, if you look closely, you'll see that negative 6 plus 1 factorial is going to be negative 5 factorial, and negative 6 minus 1 factorial is going to be negative 7 factorial. So what we said earlier was that if you get factorial of a negative number, it's no solution. So n cannot equal negative 6. However, if we plug 5 in, we're going to get 6 factorial over 4 factorial, which is perfectly fine. And if you want to just double check your answer, you can actually solve the equation. So that's all for factorial notation.